Crystal Stanage, and today I will be reading from the short story collection Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Myracle. The book begins with Maureen Johnson's The Jubilee Express. Chapter One It was the night before Christmas. Well, to be more precise, it was the afternoon before Christmas. But before I take you into the beating heart of the action, let's get one thing out of the way. I know from experience that if it comes up later, it will distract you so much that you won't be able to concentrate on anything else I tell you. My name is Jubilee Dougal. Take a moment and let it sink in. See, when you get it up front, it's not that bad. Now, imagine I was halfway through some long story, like I'm about to be, and I dropped that one on you. By the way, my name is Jubilee. You wouldn't know what to do next. I realize Jubilee is a bit of a stripper name. You probably think I've heard the call of the pole, but no. If you saw me, you'd get the idea pretty quickly that I'm not a stripper. I think. I have a little black bob. I wear glasses half the time and contacts the other half. I'm 16. I sing in choir. I attend mathletes events. I play field hockey, which lacks the undulating baby oiled grace that is the stripper's stock and train. I have no problem with strippers in case any strippers are reading this. I'm just not one. My major concern, strippage-wise, is the latex. I think latex is probably bad for your skin because it doesn't allow it to breathe. My objection is that Jubilee isn't a name. It's some kind of a party. No one knows what kind. Have you ever heard of someone throwing a Jubilee? And if you did, would you go? Because I wouldn't. It sounds like something where you have to rent a large inflatable object, put up bunting, and make a complicated plan for trash disposal. Come to think of it, it might be interchangeable with hoedown. My name has a lot to do with this story, and like I said, it was the afternoon before Christmas. I was having one of those days when you feel that life likes you. Finals were over and school was done until New Year's. I was alone in our house, which was feeling very cozy and snug. I was dressed for the night in a new outfit I'd saved for, a black skirt, tights, a sparkly red t-shirt, and my new black boots. I was drinking a little eggnog latte that I'd cooked up for myself. All my presents were wrapped and ready to go. It was all leading up to the big event. At six, I was supposed to go to Noah's house, Noah Price, my boyfriend, for his family's annual Christmas Eve smorgasbord. The Price family annual smorgasbord is a big deal in our personal history. It was how we got together in the first place. Before the smorgasbord, Noah Price was just a star in my sky, constant, familiar, bright, and far above me. I'd known Noah since the fourth grade but it felt like I knew him in the same way that I know people on television. I knew the name. I watched the show. Sure, Noah was a bit closer than that, but somehow when it's real, when it's your life, that person can feel even farther off and more unobtainable than an actual celebrity. Proximity doesn't breed familiarity. I had always liked him, but it never really occurred to me to like him like him. I never thought that was a reasonable thing to want. He was a year older than me, a foot taller, broad of shoulder, bright of eye, and floppy of hair. No was the whole package. Athlete, academic, school government, bigwig, the kind of person you think must only date models or spies or people who have laboratories named after them. So when Noah invited me to come along to 
El Smorgasbord on Christmas Eve last year. I'm more or less. And if you would like to know what happens next, you can check this title out on Libby or here at the library. Join me here next week as I read from David Rosenfeld's Best in Snow. Thank you and have a great week.